next year and for this month, the next level. God is concerned about us. He doesn't want us to remain in a particular position. He wants us to move. And the, the purpose of God for our life shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. The purpose of God for our life for the year 2023 shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. The enemy will not, uh, uh, will not prevail over us in the name of Jesus. Our mouth shall be full of testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Standing here this morning uh, to follow the protocol, God's servant has me to take this uh, first service. So he will join us in the second service. Praise God. Now this morning, still on the same topic, next level. I will just have a kind of explanation on, on what next level means. Then we will pray and we'll go deeper into what we have this morning. In the little uh, minutes that I was um, giving, I will try to meet up so that we'll be able to have uh, more time to at least pray for f about two or three prayers. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Next level. What does it mean? I saw something about next. It says nearest. When something is very close to you, you are, you are close to that thing. You are, you are close to a particular position or a particular place. That is next. Then I now combine this. What is next level? Advanced. Or unusual states. You are not where you used to be. Where people know you to be. You are moving to a better place. You know, when somebody decided that, okay, I'm using one room. I want to move. You know, you, now, you are not going to one room again. But at least, your next level is that you are going to either two rooms, self, two bedroom flats, or three bedroom flats. Okay, from that level, I'm tired of staying here. What will you do again? You are moving again. Okay, let me get my own place. Some people will say, okay, to the next level, their own nest is duplex. Okay, after staying there for some time, you discover that, oh, it can't, like, it can't look like my own. It's not like what I am expecting. Okay, to my own house, where I will be called a landlord. So, the next level, advanced, unusual states or situation. You move. I declare upon us this morning for year 2023 and for the month of February, we'll move again to our next level in destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Not the usual place where people know us, not the usual place they know us with, the usual condition, but we'll move again from glory to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, well, thank you this morning. You've been a faithful God to us. But thank you, oh God, for this month. You, you said to us that this month will be our month to go to the next level. We ask this morning, Father, Lord, move us to that next level of our life in the name of Jesus. We we'll pray that this morning the wisdom to understand what you have for us will be given to us in Jesus' name. Lord, our blessings will not elude us in Jesus' name. We pray for the speaker that you use her. Speak through her for the blessing of our life and the blessing of our souls in Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. This morning, as we all know that the month of February is our month, we center it on this topic I've mentioned. For you to gain more understanding, I will need to expand it. And that is what I am here to do this morning. We'll be learning more principles that will help us to move to the next level. To move to where God wants us to be in the month of February. And that will take us to the book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. Proverbs 4 18. We'll be looking at what the word of God says there. We normally quote it, but I don't think we've been able to sit down to digest it and understand it. We normally quote it in, 
in the old King James Version that says, but the part of the just, the part of the just. So the first point, me, if I'm reading the word, I will look at it one by one. You know, every one of us, before I go to the word, every one of us are saying, next level, I mean, next level. But look at this scripture. Proverbs 4, 18 says, but the part of the just, the just, the just is the one going to the next level. That's how I read my own. The just. That means if I am not just, if I'm not right before him, the prophecy for the month of February may not be able to work. So if you have not given your life to Jesus, I'm using this medium to tell you wherever you are listening to me, give your life to him. Because the word for the month of February says the just will be the one to move to the next level. Please give your life to him. The path from whatsoever you are doing that is not right, that cannot make you to move to the next level as we all will be moving. The Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. So, but the part of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Another scripture will say, but the part of the just is as a shining light. It shineth brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. You know, we can quote it anyhow. But the point there is that the Bible is telling us that you don't need to stay in a particular place if you are a just person. If you are a right person with God, you don't need to, they don't need to be meeting you at the same level at every time. So for the month of February, we are saying here in Gospel Evangelical Mission that it should be our next level. The level that people will look at us and see God manifesting himself in our life. And that will be our portion in the name of Jesus. So Proverbs 4, 18, make it clear to us that as children of God, we do not have one next level. Look at that scripture. The part of the just is as a shining light. One, yes, everybody will see it. That shines more. It must not just be a shining light. So our next level should not just be, I am here now. You have achieved one thing. That should, you should plateau. No. So it's clear to us that children of God, we do not have one next level. It must be a continuous progress. We must be moving from glory to glory. Hallelujah. So we don't have one next level. We have what? Multiple next levels. That shine it more and more onto the perfect day. It must not shine small and remain like that. It must not shine small and say, okay, it's getting better. No. It should continue. It should be a, a, a multiple next level. From one level to the other. That somebody will say, ah, she's no more where we used to meet her. That will be your portion. After this month, in the mighty name of Jesus, the month of March, people will look at your life and see God being displayed in your life, in every situation of your life, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, the next level we are talking about is not just for this. Okay, the month of uh, February, you move from one chair to the other. No. Oh, let's say from one inch, you are already in, uh, maybe 50,000. You know, after the old blessing and also 50,000. And the next step, it should be 51,000. What kind of a level is that? You should be moving. After 51, it should be 52. After 52, you should be 53. You should keep moving. Keep moving until when you get to where God wants you to be. And that will be our portion in the name of Jesus. So, the part of the just should shine more and more. The moment will come into a next level. We should prepare for another one. We have entered year 2023. It should be from glory to glory. You own a shop before. It should, you should do what? Aspire to do what? To get another one. You move from one level of destiny, of glorious you know, happening of God in your life, to another. So, the, the next level should not be a one position. She's like that. That is our level. They should not know you with that. For year 2023, we'll move from glory to glory in Jesus' name. So, the part of the just should keep shining more and more. The moment we cross 
into the next level, then we should prepare for another one. As long as we live, next level should never do what should never end. Should never end. That proverb 418 makes us to understand it should be from glory to glory. So we we'll keep moving. We keep moving to the next level. We keep moving to the next phase of our life. And that will be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let's begin to look at principle needed. Principle needed for the next level. You know, somebody will say, okay, we've been told now that we don't need to, 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 to stay in a particular place. We don't need to be static. What is the next thing to be done? The next thing to be done is to know the principle. Because this life also, as everything about life, is governed by what? By principle. Everything in life is governed by principle. At least for the little time I've been in the world, I've seen that everything that needs to do about life has what? What we call principle. To remain married for 20 years, it's, there's something we call a principle. For some to be married for 40, for 50 years, there are principles you apply that will make things to work. So for us to be in our next level, some of, some of us, our next level is deeper. As I said, we have so many, re, so many aspects of next level. Like in my own case, my own level, my own next level is different from yours. As you are seated, ever in school, next level is different from a uh, post next level. Whatever in school is, is asking God for, for the next level, is not if we put it in a post, uh, uh, will I say, uh, the, let's, let's put it in Yoruba, the Shokoto of Evangelist School can never size broad, uh, a post in some areas. So his own next level is different from a post next level. What the boy is asking for next level? Evangelist school may have done what? Pass it. So next level is different. But we should understand that there are principles that will get us to where we are going. And that's what we want to study this morning. The first point I want us to look at this morning on the principle needed. We need to develop a strong will like David. We need to do what? To develop a strong, a very strong will. Like David. The strong will I'm talking about is a very determined, you know, determined mind to enter into the glorious plan of God for our life. So, the first principle is that we should develop what? A strong will like David. A strong will. A determined mind to enter into the glorious plan of God for our life. Strong will. Somebody will ask, what does it mean? I will show you something this morning that will make us to understand for us to get to that next level, it should be the first principle that you should have a what? A very strong mind. You should have a very strong will. Now, let me read from here. He said, you need a strong will because the devil will use people to throw stones of discouragement at you. That will make you not to even want to go to the next level. You know, I've, I've been saying it, that our next level is different. What evangelist, what me and evangelist, we are, we are, I, will I say I personally, is what is my next level is different from your own. It's different from Mrs. Christopher's own. So for us to not get to that level, I said we need a strong will, <clears throat> which is the first principle. And if we must be like David, let's look, what, look at what David did that made the, us to refer to him. The first book of Samuel, 1 Samuel 17, verse 28 to 30, to 30, sorry, 17, 28 to 30. You need a strong way because the devil will use people to throw stones of discouragement. I want us to look at something in the life of David. What kept him going that we can refer to him today? We are going to read from 17, I mean from 28 to 30. Let's go together. Can we read together, please, so that we can understand? One, two, three, and let's go. And Ela, his eldest brother, held when he spoke unto men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Down, down, Peter, and with whom hast thou left those few sheep? In the wilderness, I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart. For thou art come down that thou mayest see the battle. 29. 
And David said, what have I done now? Okay? I used to read it as if I'm reading it to myself. Go back, please. I want us to look at something. He said, and David said, what have I now done? Another version said, what have I done now? Okay, now you see what you've done. Kilo day. Kini He said, is there not a cause? She could need any. And there is a reason why I'm here. 30. Go on. 30, please. Okay. And he said, when he turned from him towards another and said the same thing, the, and this man answered him as the first ones did. Look at what happened here. Their savior came to rescue them. For them to move to the next level. But because they don't really understand what is going on, they want to discourage him. You need a strong will. Because the devil will use people to throw stones of discouragement at you. And if you look at what happened to David here, he says, see what happened to David when he got to the battlefield. Here, the Bible says, they look at him, what is wrong with you? What have you got come here to do? I know what is wrong with you. You are too, you are over, uh, too no person. What are you doing here? He wants to go to the next level. They've ordained him as a king for years. And he's still waiting. But something is pushing him. Go to the next level. You know, we have been saying it to everyone. We are moving. And let's move to the next level. Somebody somewhere will say, what is, what is it? Which next level are we talking about? Are you not satisfied where you are? And that was what they said to him. The Bible said, he said, what have I done? Can't I come and ask questions? They even asked me to come here. <coughs> to come and help you guys. To give you food. You are asking me, what am I doing here? They just want him to be discouraged. And I want us to see something. I wrote something. See what happened to David. David, when he got to the battlefield. Number one, the, I wrote it in a alphabetical order. A, he says it was his brothers that first threw the, the, the first stone of discouragement at him. In that book of 1 Samuel 17, 20, 28 to 30, the Bible says, how do you feel when it is your own people that the devil is using to throw stones of discouragement at you? I wrote something here. Eh? Painful. I know. It will be painful. When you are saying, mommy, they asked me to put so and so something to bring to... They will say, what, what, what? Somebody... Just like I was looking for a particular thing, I want to do it, and I saw it, you know, and uh, I begin to call them. Okay, can I get this for the church? Can I get this? One of my women say, Esma, I don't think it will be possible. I felt so bad. You cannot do it. I want to do it. You are discouraging me. Can't we move to the next level? Why do you want the church to remain where the church is? Let's move. Why are you delaying it? If it is possible for us to achieve it here, let's do more. Even if this is not the way to the place, we can as well get another way, as in we can go through another road to get to where we are going. When you are being discouraged from the people that you call your own, you feel bad, painful. But so many of us, we are, because of that, we decided to go back to our shell. They said you cannot see somebody that will marry you. You get back. Maybe I'm not fine. Maybe because my leg is bow leg. Maybe because I'm too short. Somebody said it to me. You have pimples on your face. I used to say to somebody, I said, carry yourself with dignity. You fine, you know fine. You don't consign anybody. So far you look at the mirror and you see yourself, you are beautiful. Then you are good to go. They say, I know the pride of your mind. The nothing, nothingness of your head. Imagine that kind of a statement. It's enough to make David to move back and say, I'm not doing it again. I experienced that when I was growing up. I'm the type, I see things very far. This thing, we will fall into the ditch. I said, this thing, you will fall into the gutter. I said, this thing, as you are going, you will fall. You say, kilo ko embe. So, I went back into my shell. Being the last one, I will not talk. He asked, we are not growing. The whole thing is not coming up. They will not say, ah, yeah, me see their soul. And she said this thing that time. Oh. But they've allowed me not to talk again. So I was inside my chair. I, I won't talk. So when they come with the case, I say, ah, oh, no, I don't know. I don't want you know what we're supposed to do. But because 
because you have, you have allowed me not to talk in those days. So I decided not to talk again. But you should not allow anyone to discourage you. It was his brother that said threw this first stone at him. The stone of discouragement. Don't let them discourage you. Oh, you want to get a good place for your place of, you know, for business. Somebody say, ah, 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 ah. She business in here, my fellow. And you had, you have not even, oh, see, see, question, see, no, me. You are afraid. Oh, ni mafa. They said, that place is deep. Oh, don't put your leg inside it and you are afraid. Because somebody said, it won't be possible. Try. Keep moving. Don't be discouraged. I believe I'm talking to somebody this morning. For you to move to the next level, you must not allow the voice of the discourager to prevail. Don't let it enter into your ear and you will not say, They said it is not possible. They said it is not possible. They said it is not possible. I said, see how David turned to another direction. If you look at that place we read, the Bible says, after his brother Eliab said, what have you come to? The Bible says, he turned. He faced another place. I want you to know this morning, eh? if, you are, if you are telling people or somebody beside you, I'm go- I want to get a phone. I want to go back to say, eh? <laughs> you too. Which school are you going? You that you cannot speak good English. And you are discouraged. The Bible says, and David did what? He turned. I will show you something as we go on this morning. You don't allow them. Even if they say it's not possible, try. Try. Take the step of faith first. Tobawa failed, then you come back. Well, you will learn your mistake. And you will not make that mistake again. Bible said David turned to another direction. He turned to another person. Egbo, what are they doing? What is the meaning? What, who is that man that is coming every time? That everybody will run back and say, ah, he's, they are afraid of him. Oh, he is coming to kill us. Who is that man coming every time? Because his own brother did not believe him. They don't even allow him. The Bible said he turned. Can you help me? What is going on? Do you know from there? David began to gather the information. Information. Of getting to the next level. Information of getting to where things will be better. And the Bible says, he later became the giant of Israel. Somebody is here under the voice, under the sound of my voice this morning. Whatsoever the enemy said, it is not possible for you to achieve. I declare this morning, you will get it achieved in the mighty name of Jesus. Next level. Somebody say next level. So the first point the principle needed to get there is that we need to, to do what to develop a strong, strong will. David was determined. So the first thing under that one was it was his brother that first did what threw the stone of discouragement at him. I wrote here, the devil uses people around so that you will become discouraged easily. They will make you to think, oh, King Tambeo, or Yao Tala That particular shop is not possible. It's not possible for your age to get married. It's not possible for your age to be pregnant. You don't know that it's not easy. You are too young to get admission. You are too. They said a lot. They will say a lot. Let me put it that way. Because they said a lot to David. But the Bible says, as David did, you know, as he was hearing it, he did not allow them to discourage him. He said, my Lord say, ah, she be your and win. Go back, God, you bello, my mobile. And that was what happened. A, a, a strong will, a strong mind that I can do it with God's help. I can turn this stone over. I will get there. That is the first principle. So, and in getting your will <clears throat> being strong, you will, be, you will be thrown different stones of discouragement. Let's see the second thing. 
be under the first one. Understand this under the fair, uh, a strong will like David. You know, I told you the first thing that will happen to you is that they will throw stone of discouragement. The next one, the devil will use more people. He will use more people to discourage you. More people to get you discouraged. Because as David is not getting discouraged, the devil too said, can me only give up? Ah, to get to your next level, I won't allow you. your brother throws stones at you. You did not listen. I will throw the stone on some other people from outside. Let's look at it. He used more people in the book of 1 Samuel 17, 31 to 37. Can you please put it on the screen? Let's see it together. 1 Samuel 17, 31. 1 Samuel 30, uh, 17, 31. Oh yeah, let's go. He says, and when the words were heard, which David spake, they re-asked them before Saul, and he sent for him. Let's Okay, 31, good. 20, 32, let's go. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. <clears throat> Thy servant will go and fight with this civil <laughs> if you If you read the scripture, they will tell you that David is a very short man. You imagine you are looking at somebody from, from, from down like this. That means the person is very tall. He said, and Saul so said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight him with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Okay, go on. And the Bible says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamp out of the floor. 35. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and do what? And smote him, and slew him. 36. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And these uncircumcised Philistines shall be as one of them. See, he has defiled the armies of the living God. And 37, he says, David said, moreover, <clears throat> the Lord, the Lord that deliver me out of the power of the lion and out of the power of the bear, he would deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul so said unto David, you have convinced me, you know. Go, and the Lord be with thee. But look at it from the beginning. After every other person, his brother persecuted him. You cannot do it. He went to, the, to, the, to all the armies. They said, you, all of us, we are here. We are running away from you. You want to go. More people. The next thing, they said, okay, let's take you to the boss. Our boss, he said he can go and defend this project. He can go before us to go and do it. The boss said, ha, whoa, the man we are, that is our opponent, he has been collecting this thing for years. He has been the one they have been giving this contract. He has been the champion in this city. He has been the champion in this estate. He has been the champion in this, uh, uh, what do you call it? This uh, area. You now want to come and overpower him. You want to come here and say you will go. Ah, you are too small. He said, oh God, I can't do it. Try me. Let's see whether God will not fight for me. The Bible says, the devil used more people to discourage David. But David did not allow their voice to do what? To discourage him. As they were showing him why he cannot conquer Goliath. He was showing them the past faithfulness of God to prove that he can conquer Goliath. Anytime you are faced with challenge. Do you have any past story? Past victory? You can show to the devil that God has helped me to conquer so so and so so thing in so so and so so years. If you don't have one, begin to create it now. You have to develop a strong way so that at once, at least while you overcome and conquer. To but you overcome. If anything come up like as we are talking about now, you will be able to stand out and say, in so so and so so years. That was how the devil came with his ugly head. And my God, the God in whom I served, gave me victory over it. And you will see your confidence will come back. But if you don't have any, I don't know whether you are getting me this morning. Ah, ah, 
And to go to 30, go to 35. Ah, it will be difficult. Why don't you remind them that the God of the Bible, I read in so so and so so thing, so so and so so place in the Bible, that God did what? He defeated the devil. He gave the, his own people victory. I am one of his. He will give me victory. Until you develop that kind of a strong heart, as they are challenging you, you will be buying. You will be the one to be afraid. The more they discourage David, the more he's showing them the victory, the past victory. I killed the bear. I killed the lion. Even if you don't have anything to say, go back to the world. Go back to the world and quote the word that God that gave me victory. Over and so, so. God gave the people of Israel. In fact, it's enough for you to read the story of the Israelites. To show the devil. Discouragement in her. Lord she Bible from. from Genesis to the Revelation. Ah, I was reading a portion. I told my husband, I said, ah, ah. it has happened before in the Bible several times. I begin to pick it out. My husband said, and it's true. I said, the reason why we don't know some, you know, we don't have some answer to some issues in life is because we don't use to read the word. If we, if we read the word, eh? The Bible said David referred back. The God, he has defied the people of Israel. Like, Hi, David, who overcome him. Mysteries in from the word. Read the word. Chew it. Let it be your lifestyle. Nobody can just come up and say he wants to cajole you when you know the word. Nobody can come and tell you it's not possible because you know the word. The word of God, the level of the word of God you know is what will make you to overcome when challenges come. But when you don't have the word in you, you will be afraid. The more they showed David problem, he showed them the answer to it. And number C, he said, the devil struck again when he used Goliath himself to create fear in David. He should be, ah, ah. Oh, 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 he did not allow this boy. This boy defeated the king. Ah, ah. He said, I can do it, sir. Allow me. King Saul does not have any choice than to put all the things on him. Oh, yeah, David, we are this. We are that. I know if you have a strong will, he too is afraid you. He now put all the cloth on him. Go, the Lord is with you. Let's see you. But when David got there, the third set of people that faced David was the Goliath himself. The challenges came up by himself and said, Emiri, have you not seen situation at times when you are praying for somebody and what kind of demon and what kukulu kukulu demons just show up in your dream and say, leave that case. Toba Leave that place. It has happened several times. I say, and you call fikes in your silly. I can remember one time, even before I got married, something happened. I went out for evangelism very early in the morning my, for morning cry. And as I was returning, I met a lady under a tree. This killer uh, uh, Papa a bikini or I can't remember the name. I met a fake girl. Fake she sat under it. She said, I've, I've been waiting for you. Good morning. I said, how are you? Good morning. And I was already late for the school. I'm going to school. Good morning. How are you? Why are you there? I have that confidence to ask, him, ask her. What are you doing under that tree? She said, ah, this is where I used to receive fresh air. I said, you will leave the house and come and sit under the tree. Doing what? He said, I'm receiving fresh air. Ah. He now said, can you deliver me? Inside my heart, delivered. I remember that there was a time we were doing deliverance in the church. The devil has that kind of a question. And our pastor said, It's Jesus that will deliver. I said, Jesus that I preach will deliver you. She said, eh. Oh, yeah, come and show me Jesus. And I went closer. Say after me, Lord Jesus. She confessed, Jesus, come into my life. He said, I don't like my lifestyle. I don't like the way I'm sitting here. Everybody's inside. And they've known her like that. She's a pretty girl. Being possessed by familiar spirits. 
We prayed. And I said, I will introduce you. I refer. That's another problem I want to tell us. Some of us who are leaders here, there are some cases you don't handle by yourself. I went to school. I, you know, clean up. I told her, I'll come back and take you to the church. So I, I went to the house, clean up. I went to school. I think when I came back, I just decided to sleep a little. Before fellowship, or because every day is our church. We go to church every day. So I lay down to have a small nap. And I saw this kunkulu. Kunkulu things came up and said, ah. <laughs> Do you understand? And I was inside that thing. You know, you want to talk. Your voice will not come out. It, if, I don't know whether it has happened to you several I want to go, gee, 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 gee. I just opened my eyes. I said, eh, I will go and refer this case to the church. I cannot handle it. And I went straight to the church to inform them. I met a lady, so something happened. I hand over to them so that they can help me. As I'm talking to you, she's married. I met her brother sometimes ago inside this compound. So the person greeted me. So I was looking at myself. I told that but he's greeting me. I greeted the person. He said, you don't remember me. I said, no, sir. He said, you remember there is a lady you met. So, so, and so, so, yes. I am the senior brother. That was our challenge in those days. She doesn't sleep inside. But she's delivered now. And she's married with either three children or so. I said, praise God. We give God the praise. I appreciate God. I now remember. I said, ah. What am I saying? The devil struck again by bringing Goliath himself to create fear in David. Let's look at it. 1 Samuel 17, 42 to 46. 1 Samuel 17, 42 to 46. Please, let's be quick. Let's be fast. 17, okay? 42, he said, and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. She wore She wore into church. Somebody looked at my husband, a very strong man in this area, and said, She And we know him. We said, My husband said, No. Olu wato ron mini she lo fi lo 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 ko church si be. He said, eh. you know there are some questions they ask you at times. Are you yourself? You will look. You will begin to wonder inside you. Can I? Should I say I am the one? Can I say God? Can I say Jesus? When you don't know what to say, refer them to Jesus. Opomulero, the one that can grant them into powder and say he is God that you are contending with. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David and he disdained him, he was but a youth and rudy and a very fair countenance. Okay, go on. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? Shame in Yaja. That thou comment with, with what? With staff? And this Philistine caused David by his God. Shame me, Emilomu. I remember when we were at village. Because I live a little when I was small. You are not even afraid. You know, somebody will look at you and say, You? Ah. If it has not happened to you, it has happened several times. When you get to a place, somebody will look at you and you like, Bye, Benny. Ah. And then continue on. What will you answer there? Will you be afraid? Emma Binuma. If you are like that, then you are, you are not showing what the Bible says. The righteous is as bold as lion. He said, and the Philistine said to David, come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the hair, and to the beasts of the field. And then, David said to the Philistine, when somebody is telling you, you possible, he will, you will reign and I will reign. And if you don't want me to reign, you will come down for me. The Bible says, and then said David to, to the Philistine, thou come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. 
the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Oh, my Bible, no, Jebe. If you don't know Bible, don't go and face them. Oh. Let me warn you here today. If you are not a Bible scholar, you are not deep in the world. Oh, Tijero, don't go and face the enemy. You will be defeated. He said, and this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. Have you not watched uh, in those days when we are so small? <laughs> you laugh. Uh, Father, yo, Father, yo. The second person will face it. They will be saying it and be saying it. They will be saying it. The same thing is applicable to you as a child of God. When the devil comes, when he quote his own, quote your own back. The Bible says it is written. Remember Jesus did the same. The Bible said when the devil came to tempt Jesus, what happened? He quote, devil, my Bible, oh my Bible, you are going to That's the reason why you should make the word of God your priority every day. The Bible says the devil, he quotes the scripture. Oh, you know, Bible, no, 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 he is the word by himself. The Bible says, and he, the Bible, uh, Jesus too was quoting it. They were, until when the devil said that, uh, he said, the Bible says, he left Jesus for the appointed time. Look at this. He said, this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smooth thee, and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the hair and to the wild beasts of the heart that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. When the enemy is showing you impossibility, why don't you show the devil the possibility of God from the scripture? He says, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saved not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you <clears throat> into our hands. Okay? Goliath was unable to finish his own statement. He does not have any backing of the word. <clears throat> but David said to him, I will not only kill you. He said, you came to me with this, your spear. Do you want to run with a catapult? I, I will kill you and give your head to that one said no I will not only kill you I will cut your head you said you will cut I will cut but my own eh, the Lord will give unto us victory eh, but when battle finish answer it. not have battle he said I will kill you he said are you there this morning is there any challenge you are facing presently that doesn't want you to go to the next level can you confess with your mouth I will overcome you. I will step on you. I will cross to the next level. I will achieve my dream. I will achieve my aim. I will gain that place that God has given to me. You are a liar, devil. Look at me as, as, I'm, as I'm talking this morning. I will overcome you. I will get to my destination in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. David didn't give up. He stood on his trust for God to confront Goliath. And Goliath do what? Fell. It surely drew me to Jesus. But if Jesus is not in you, as I've said from the beginning, you won't be able to overcome them. What you think you have, and you're still saying it's not enough. This thing is not. Some people want it. So if you are not careful, what you are not, you did not even, I, I would like, what you don't value, you don't take in high esteem, somebody will just, phew, and you will not be wondering, ah, ah. the same thing, is what is making the second person, what, what, are, what is she or he doing, that have not been doing, then you need to go back to God. Don't let the enemy defeat you by discouraging you. You need to develop a strong will in going to your next level like David. And the Lord will help us to achieve it in the name of Jesus. Let me show us four things 
that will help you to de develop a strong will. Four things that will make you to do what? Develop a strong will. Number one, your trust in, in what God can do. Four things that will, will help you to develop a strong will. Number one, your trust in God, in what God can do. Your trust in what God can do. The Bible says there is no challenge that come that is not common. <coughs> Sorry. There is nothing that is not common. Oh, I have not been able to go and check the Bible. There is nothing to in the Bible. So, your trust in what God can do. And this is why you as a believer should always study the word of God for growth in order to know, what, to know God more. You know, I said it the other time. Your trust in God, I mean, your trust in what God can do. And this is why you as a believer should always study the word of God for growth. Study to show yourself and approve work, man. Who need not to be put to shame, but rightly divine the word of truth. The more you study, the more understanding you will get. He will have prevailed. So study more. Study more. So the first thing that will make you to grow a strong will is that you should, you should trust what God can do. And how can you get it done? You must study the word. Number two. When you understand that the devil is a liar. I should come back. Okay, four things that will help you develop strong will. Number one, your trust in what God can do. And this is why you as a believer should always study the word of God for growth. In order to know God more. Number two, when you understand that the devil is a liar. <laughs> the Bible says he's the father of all lies. So if you're a liar here, your father is the one we are talking about. When you study, I mean, when you understand that the devil is a liar, he is always different from who he, pre he pretends to be. A shuama dogma. He's a liar. He is the one that will say, ah, he thought you should not be eating if you don't want them to catch you. He is the same person that will go to another person, your enemy, and tell them, well, the only thing that can make her or him to fall is by eating salt. Put salt in a meat pie in a donut go and present to her you will see that she will fall the same devil is a liar and that's the reason why we used to sing that song devil na liar number one na devil liar na he's a liar he's <coughs> always different he's always different from who he, 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 he pretend to be can you imagine on an ordinary stone brought the big Goliath down? Goliath stole God. Ordinary stone brought Goliath down. The devil is a liar. If you, if you know that your God is big, no matter what the devil is presenting, you will hands him down. Ordinary stone brought Goliath down. The devil is a liar. Number three, like David, move away from negative-minded people. Don't stay around them. For you to develop a strong will, move. The Bible said, when the second set of people said, you cannot defeat him. The Bible said, David turned. I don't hear and I wrote something here. I saw this and I said I will share with us five set of people you should be far from. Number one, people who don't know your words. Be far. Two, people who don't trust you. Be far from them. Three, people who always put you down. Be far from them. Number four, people who don't respect you. Be far from them. Number five, people who take your loyalty for granted? Be far from them. Ne 
negative-minded people, be far from them. They cannot help you. They would rather make you not to stop your pursuit for greatness. Should I come back to it? Okay. Five set of people you should be far from. Number one, people who don't do what know your words. Two, people who don't trust you. Three, people who always put you down. Four, people who don't do what respects you. Five, people who take your loyalty for granted. One of our mothers in faith was preaching one time. And I saw in her preaching, she said, you are in a gathering and they are saying all sorts to, to pull you down. What are you still doing there? You have a friend. If you say, I have, a, I have this here style. It's I say, ah, in fact, I wore it two years ago. Move away from there. My mother will say, your own principle is that I say, Okay, the day I was showing him, I said, can you see? If you must be great, you must, you must do like those who are already great. She said, that is the reason why God gave you two legs. Abby, people are, they are, they are, they, 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 they put you down, they put, he said, you have two legs, do what? Walk away. David turned. You know, like I know Bible see. The Bible said, David turned and said, okay. You think I will not be able to? Don't worry, my brother. I do receive. I think I told the champion. Somebody is telling you, oh, uh, oh, uh, you that you have dropped since how many years from school? You now want to go back. What do you want to do with it? Tell them that we saw a woman going back to study law at age sixty. Somebody is telling you, yeah, you will, you will give back. I've seen a sixty-year-old woman giving back. This one God gave her a He said, eh? So I can still be pregnant 60 years. Kill along with a she. There's nothing he cannot do. So, but when you see negative people around you, all what they are telling you is that oh, she, she. Oh, she, she. you know, there are some people that they all they are talking, yeah, walk, you jari. Move away from them. Don't make them your friend again. They will say you are proud. It's because of where you are going. The, in getting to the next level, old lady, I more you want your tomakuro. Why are you looking at me like that? Yes, because with the five set of people, look at them. People who don't who don't know your words. People who, who don't trust you. People who always put you down. People who don't respect you. People. Okiloku. <laughs> so, why are you still there? Change your position. Move away. Like David. Turn. Go and meet another person that can encourage you. And number four. Number four. Never forget yesterday's victories. Never do what? Forget yesterday's victories. Because every single time you remember yesterday's victory, a new strength for progress is battered in you. Never forget yesterday's victories. I want it to do come to it. Don't want it to be able to overcome. You know so many of us will forget those things. We say, ah, show she 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 by. Ah, why do you say long? One thing about me is that if the front is not palatable, it's difficult. My move, brother, and see very well how can I achieve it from afar. You stay where you are and you notice that you cannot see far. When you're in Eshintoba, that the saying I've been, all are shaking, you rekindle yourself. Come back. Don't be discouraged. Never forget yesterday victories. Beloved, every single time you remember your yesterday victories, a new strength is battered in you.
David killed Goliath. And he, he do what? He get to the next level. You too can get to your next level. If you develop a strong will and determination of the next level. I want you to bow down your head this morning. Begin to talk to the Lord. In any area you have been discouraged before. In any way, the road seems as if it's not palatable. The journey is tough and difficult. Oh, remember all the goodness of God in your life. Begin to tell God, I know you are a mighty God. You pull down the wall of Jericho by only a shout of victory. You can give me victory over this and that. Bubu challenges in so far alone. He's able to do. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly. He can do and undo. Hey, Karaba Sheterebosha. Begin to talk to the Lord. You are able, Lord. I remember all the victories you have given me in the past, in the time past. Is it the victory right from the womb of my mother? Hey, the heart want to swallow me, but I escaped. <laughs> I escaped. I escaped from my mother's womb. I came out. Did you even bother to remember me? I'm sharing my testimony as you are listening. Despite the challenges, they didn't even know where they put me because they are trying to save my mother's life. But I escape. Olu IMC escape. I don't know about you this morning. Tell God about the victories that He has given to you. I Olu IMC escape from my mother's womb. You gave me victory that time. You are able to give me victory again. You are able, oh God, more than able, oh God. David defeated Goliath. I can defeat my Goliath. I can step on them. I have victory over my enemies. Hey, David defeated Goliath. I can overcome that challenge of not getting a good place to stay. A good husband, a good wife have been unable to give birth. I know you can give me victory, Lord. The Lord that gave their Falabi's family their children, despite of no same period, you are able, Lord, to give me what I desire. You are able, Lord. Able, 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 Lord. I have victory, Lord. Please talk to God. I'm giving you a few minutes more. Talk to God. I have victory over my enemies. I have victory over my challenges. I will come out victorious. I'm no more discouraged. Spirit of discouragement, come out. Get out of me. I am encouraged. I am an overcomer. I will step upon my enemy. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the healing power upon me. Are you sick in any area this morning? I minister healing unto you in the name of Jesus. Be healed on every part of your body. The healing power of God come upon you in the name of Jesus. Everything that looks difficult. Because you are in this program this morning. Hey, victory is yours in Jesus name. We move to our next level. We overcome our challenges. Thank you Jehovah. For you have answered our prayers in Jesus name mighty name we have prayed Amen. everlasting father we thank you this morning thank you for your word that you have sent to us thank you because you are a loving father a kind father well thank you lord your desire for us is to move from glory to glory we ask for this this morning we receive by faith in jesus name we move from glory to glory in the name of jesus we overcome all our challenges in jesus name our mouth shall be full of testimony Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Shall we rise up together as we declare? This week shall be a favorable week for us in Jesus' name. Our going on and coming in is blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. When men are saying there's a casting down for them, we shall rise and say there is a lifting up for us in Jesus' name. Our testimony shall be full. We shall overcome our enemies. We shall return with testimony. Thank you, Father, for your answer. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.